Everyone pay attention. Hello? Uh, Matt. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yes, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. How are you? How you doing? I'm good. I'm uh, just waking up. <laughs> oh, okay. You're, you're out in California. Uh, yeah, I guess I wake up around the time you guys get to school, but three hours later. Oh, okay. Okay, great. <laughs> um, I'm Mr. Morell. Um, cool. I'm uh, Catherine's uh, computer science teacher. And I'm so honored that uh, you've given us the ability to communicate with you this morning. So we really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Um, thank you for having me. You're Happy looking. To... I'm not sure if you can see uh, really well, but guys, wave real quickly. <laughs> Catherine's in the room, by the way, as well. Yeah, I think I see her. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you. And, um, you know, we've got a ton of questions, but... Uh, let me just introduce you, um, and just correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Matthew, you're a student at Cal Berkeley, um, and you recently, um, there you go, wow, awesome shirt. And you recently participated in Microsoft's Hackathon. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your experience with that? Oh, there you go. There's the, um, there's yeah, the uh, so, lanyard, right? Uh, have any, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, I think there's a touch of a delay. Have any of you guys ever done a hackathon before? No. No, but, I, but we have a lot of students here, Matt. Um, they uh, have some experience with Python. They just recently uh, finished uh, doing a section on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They also, they've also done uh, Android App Inventor. And they've worked with Scratch, which is MIT's, um, you know, online, um, you know, yeah, programming yeah. platform. Um, cool. Well, yeah. Uh, so that that's awesome. I think the the sooner you guys can move to Python, the better. Uh, Python and Java are really the things that you want to be working on. Uh, Scratch is a good introductory course, but I don't know honestly if I would spend more than a couple of weeks on it. Okay. Um, because just because like everything out there is is in Python these days. I mean, if you guys want to like do anything from like making music on your computer to like writing a game to really, you know, like neural networks and machine learning, uh, stock market prediction, everything's written in Python these days. So I would I would push you guys if you're interested, definitely go for Python as soon as possible. Um, because even Java is becoming much less popular now. Okay. Um, now, uh, before I open up the uh, the room, uh, Matthew, for students to ask you questions, because I'm sure that they have some really good questions to ask you. Um, uh, it's my understanding from your mom uh, that you've done work with the stock market. You've done stock market prediction analysis. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that and also talk about the awesome experience uh, with Microsoft's uh, hackathon event. Yeah, why don't I um, why don't I give you guys my history of coding in ninety seconds? Um, so I actually started coding like six months before all of you guys did. Uh, wow! So uh, I basically my computer crashed, and I was like, uh, I don't, I'm I'm too lazy to go to the Apple store, and I'm too broke as a college student to buy a new one. So you know what? I'm gonna fix it. Right. Uh, my friend said, you can totally do that here. And he kind of showed me how to like get started. Um, so that was really cool. Put Linux on my computer, which was weird. Uh, and just kind of like hit the ground running from there. Uh, got really interested in like how computers work. Took one class. Uh, got a job over the summer programming to like, uh, basically I wrote code that picked stocks in the stock market. So you can write code to kind of predict which ones are going to go up and which ones are going to go down, and that helps you know clients make money. Wow. Uh, so that was really crazy. And then started getting interested in hackathons, which are like a super cool thing to do because they push you to you know you get like 36 hours and a whole bunch of prizes at the end, and it's like you want to push yourself to create the coolest thing you can possibly do 
in the shortest amount of time possible. So it really pushes you to like learn new tools and kind of get things done, which I think is the coolest part about computer science is you can build anything that you can dream of. So uh, uh, turns out I'm okay at hackathons. I, my team won first prize for our robot that sorts trash from recycling. Uh, they then advanced, uh, they encouraged us to submit to their national competition, which is called Imagine Cup. Uh, that's open to anybody over the age of 16 who's a student. So you guys could even do that next year if you wanted to. Um, and Imagine Cup was a really cool experience. They uh, they fly you out to San Francisco, which I, it's a cloudy day, but you can see it from my room. Uh, but most kids came from you know Hawaii or Florida or somewhere crazy, and so that was really cool. Yeah, I think I have one of my students. Uh, her name is Catherine Escobar. Yeah. And, uh, thank you. Um, I, th I think uh, Catherine uh, went ahead and applied for that uh, Imagine Cup competition. Um, she's going to be doing something in the summer, I think, at Carnegie Mellon. And then from there, she's going to go to San Francisco and do the Imagine Cup there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was a cool experience. Like, we got to meet the CEO of Microsoft and all that, which was pretty bizarre. Uh, <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's just kind of, it's a cool way to like meet people. It's a really small world. A bunch of us had already met each other at hackathons and stuff. So yeah, go do some hackathons because it'll push you to build really cool things. Okay, great. Uh, Matthew, if you don't mind, I'd like to open the floor up now and see if uh, students have any questions. Um, I, I myself have a million questions, but I want to give them the opportunity to ask you some things if you don't mind. Yeah, awesome. Let's 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 get some questions going. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone have any particular questions to ask Matthew? Any questions at all? Mm -hmm. I just want to say like high culture stuff. I feel like you're in high culture at Harvard. Like how do you know what you're supposed to say to them? That's gonna be <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, we have a student here, um, Nicholas Abranches. He's um, outstanding programmer, and he had been working with Python before. And he kept on saying, oh, Mr. Morrell, we should focus more on Python, do more with Python. So that's something that definitely I'm going to keep in mind for next year's class. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, C++ is really hard to use. I think I think that's what he said at the end there. It's, I, I just, it's not fun. I don't like it because there's so many inconsistencies with everything. Sometimes if things work in Spur because it just doesn't work, Python is what uses yeah, it's really hard to tell what you're doing wrong in C++. That's the big problem. It's not a good learning language. Like, Python's a really good learning language because it tells you exactly what you're doing wrong as you do it. Now, you took, Matthew, did you take the introductory computer science course at Cal Berkeley? Uh, yeah, it's a cool class. You can even go online because they webcast it and do it yourself at home. Uh, I think they open sourced, like, all of the materials and stuff. So uh, you can go back and look at the lectures that I saw back in fall 2014. Um, and I took it with this guy. He was, I think, head of natural language research at Google. And Google sent him here to try to get more Berkeley CS undergrads to work for Google. Um, they actually pay part of his salary because he couldn't afford to, to do it. Otherwise, they, he would be taking too big of a pay cut to go to teaching. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so he's uh, he's really a really good teacher, and I can send you guys the link if any of you are curious. It's uh, Intro to CS. They used to teach it in in Scheme, but nobody really wants to learn Scheme anymore, so now they teach it in Python. Okay, great, um, Matthew. As I look around the classroom, I see some really talented students. Um, I have a student that's really good with videos, um, and uh, I just had a student that got accepted to USC's um, uh, fine arts um, program down there, you know, where you do, you, you learn how to do a screenplay, but you also learn how to do video game creation. You, you, know, you learn a lot of things, yeah. Um, I think it's called interactive media. She's, she's going into the interactive media program. And uh, she's already receiving offers from Silicon Valley for internships. Um, <laughs> If a student were interested in using their talents like that, you know, I, there's a lot of students at Gulliver that are really good and, you know, they know a little bit of programming, but they also know a little bit of video, um, video gaming. They know how to 
edit videos, how to how to do mashups. You know, they they, they have all of these skills. Um, where can they go from here? You know, what what should they do in order to to get to the level that you're at, where you're basically just um, doing things that are so you know cutting edge with respect to technology. Well, what's their next step? Um, so the cool thing, the best thing that you can do is to basically have a side project, right? Um, because the line between CS as a subject and every other subject is becoming blurrier and blurrier. Uh, interesting. Where, you know, everybody I know in biology, uh, they're studying CS because you can't, you can't do a good biological study without good CS these days. Everyone I know in econ, they have to learn a little bit of CS because they can't, you can't do econometrics without CS these days. Right. Uh, so like I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a business major and I'm learning CS and everybody I know wishes they knew it better. So if you're passionate about music, you know, learn, play around with some Python libraries that help you build, you know, music. Uh, if you're passionate about video, look into some of the video encoding libraries and try to learn a little bit more about how do the individual pixels work because it'll give you a finer grain like control over what you're doing. So whatever you're doing, you can integrate CS, but the biggest thing is to pick something that you care about to try to build. Um, and that'll, that'll push you to find the, the coolest cutting edge technology to use machine learning, neural networks, you know, all the, all the cool stuff, all the buzzwords. The best thing you can do is to build something because employers want to see that you are, that you like it. They, you know, employers don't really care what your skill set is because they can't really assess it that well. They can see it much more clearly. You know, I can say, look, I'm a machine learning expert, but they can see it more clearly if I say, look, I built a robot that uses machine learning to sort trash from recycling, right? Uh, right, exactly. So having a portfolio is really powerful for getting into college, for getting a job after. Uh, and I think the best thing you can do is to build something that you're really excited about, you know? Uh, I know that our school, uh, we had 32 students this year participate in something called FIRST um, Robotics, um, where yeah. you have six weeks to um, design and build um, a robot, um, but also there was um, virtual, you know, the virtual design aspect of it, the marketing aspect of it, the social media aspect of it. So there's a lot of skills that the students developed in those six weeks. And we did go to a regional up in Orlando, and I think our final out of 63 uh, teams, we ended up in 17th place. Um, so, oh, wow, but, cool. but, yeah, it, it's awesome. It's it's basically the largest STEM competition in North America. But uh, the the idea behind it, Matthew, was like you said, have students be passionate about something and demonstrate what they've learned by producing something like a robot. So I'm, I'm trying to encourage more students here at school to do things like that, you know. That's cool. What did the robot do? Uh, it, it was something um, called, um, um, oh, it's, my, my mind's drawing a blank now. Uh, oh, it's called First Stronghold. It's kind of like Capture the Flag, where you, you have to go through different terrains, um, and you have to pick up, um, you know, balls, and you have to launch them at towers. And then the, the robots have to work collaboratively in, in order to accomplish certain tasks. So the, the idea was to be able to perform certain things like go over rough terrains and go over things like, um, you know, like draw bridges and so forth. Uh, but the robot also had to um, intake a, a ball, you know, use an intake system and also had to project the ball. Um, and then uh, 20 seconds before the end of the, the match, the robots had to actually climb, you know, um, the tower. So yeah, it was it was pretty cool. I, I'm gonna go ahead and send you videos of, of the different matches throughout the competition so you could see. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, it's actually first robotics was actually founded by Dean Kamen. So, um, and, and he's very passionate about fur furthering that competition every year. So uh, this year, for example, there's 25 million dollars in scholarships that were given out. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, let me let me see if uh, if students have any other questions. Hold on. Actually, well, I have a question for you. What programming language do you use? 
uh, we use Java, by the way. We use Java for the for the robot. But uh, true to form, uh, I'm hearing more and more uh, students nationwide switching from Java to Python uh, to program the robot. So yeah, um, I guess yeah. The 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 hot new thing in robotics is actually JavaScript programming, which is really weird because uh, I guess a lot of people want to base. Uh, like you can get a lot of the real time connection between things using Node, and so like it saves you a lot of time in like trying to program like signals and like trying to figure figure out like timing, like when I press up, how far after that does the robot actually move up? Like, right. Uh, so yeah, I'd say check out JavaScript too. Yeah, that's something that the students now are are learning. Um, yeah. And they're actually going to be having a project very soon where they build their own e-commerce site uh, that uses cool. HTML5, uh, CSS, and JavaScript. Nice. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Any questions, guys? Comments? So you know you're looking um, you're looking uh, Matthew at kids here that are applying to places like Carnegie Mellon, and they're applying to places uh, in the Northeast. Um, there are also a few that are interested in applying to California. So, um, other than what you just mentioned, you know, have some type of big project that you can um, present. Um, what about something like an e-portfolio? Is that something that? How do you feel about that? Is that something that um, students at Cal Berkeley seem to be constructing in order to to demonstrate to uh, people that run uh, these companies? demonstrate what they've done yeah I mean well so if you're like if you're like a computer scientist the best way to do it is to have a website right and then right. you can just you know tack it on your resume a lot of colleges will accept like a URL um, but if you and if you're interested in you know design and arts uh, portfolio is clearly really important um, so yeah I mean I think the way you present it can can allow you a lot of personal expression, you know? Like, right. Uh, if you're going to do a PowerPoint versus like a Word document, even versus like a, an HTML file. Right. Uh, but it adds a lot of professionalism if you host it yourself. So if you go online, find a web server, um, and kind of like create your own website, that's like a really compelling thing because you know that that way your work can kind of speak for itself as a piece of your work too right okay uh, look this matthew this has been amazing um i'd like to maybe touch base with you again uh maybe early next year just to cool. see what you're up to and you know what's been going on at cal berkeley and you know maybe some of the projects that you undertaken since this conversation so um, let's keep in touch, okay? Cool, yeah. Um, anything else, you guys? Can I? Anything else, guys? Any other questions or comments? All right, guys. Round of Thank applause you. for Matthew. Thank you. Very good. Catherine says she loves you. <laughs> uh, okay, Kat. um, listen, this has been extremely informative. Um, hey, Cal. Oh, we actually have someone here uh, that just walked in, Colin. This is Matthew. Hi, Matthew. Colin, do you, you have any questions for Matthew? I actually had one question. I was wondering, um, I'm a computer science major myself, and uh, I was wondering if there's anything that you could recommend to prepare for what's to come, I guess. <laughs> um, you got to, yeah, as, just do as many side projects as you can because it, it'll convey, like, your passion, you know. Uh, otherwise, like, everything you do winds up being kind of similar to all the other students. So well, if you get a chance, like do hackathons, like do a lot of side projects, uh, do things that build things that you think are really cool. Um, Colin um, came as a runner up to something called the Congressional App Challenge for the district here in South Florida. Yeah, so, yeah, Kat told me about that. Yeah, the, the amazing, amazing thing that they that he was part of. So that, that's one of the things that you you've been talking about the, this entire Skype session. So. We appreciate the feedback on that, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um, keep building things, guys. Okay, thank you, Matthew. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll stay in touch uh, very soon, okay? 
Okay, thanks. Let me know if you have any questions. You can always ask the hat, okay? Yeah, and we'll, uh, I'll keep your email just in case they have any other questions. I'll, I'll follow up with you on an email, okay? Thank you very much. Okay. Oh, man, that's the whole thing.